Anthony Troxel. I'm Jeff Lou. I'm Wiley. Yeah, there you go. And we are B Scale. Mm. All right, so I'll give you a little introduction to why we have the B Scale. So, uh, entomology department is interested in weighing bees, but they're actually more interested in figuring out uh, how much pollen and nectar bees are carrying. And so, uh, they called upon us to create a scale that can measure. Uh, on the order of uh, milligrams for them, which is the size of the pollen loads that they'll be carrying. Uh, the system that they have is actually a, a smaller system with uh, two feeding areas, one with wildflowers, one with uh, sugar cubes, and they want to weigh the bees as they uh, uh, come back from or, or uh, leave from the, the hive uh, to figure out what the difference is in the amount that they weighed when they left and when they came back, see how much they collected. Okay, so this gives you an idea of the scale that we're working with. So on the left is a bee with a pollen load on its hind legs. And on the right here is a pollen load compared to a nickel. So the bees can weigh between 30 milligrams and 200 milligrams, whereas the pollen loads can weigh anywhere from one milligram to 15 milligrams, so very tiny measurements. For these measurements, we are using an S256 load cell from Strain Measurement Devices. And how it works is it's a strain gauge load cell, so it measures the strain as there's a change in resistance. So there is a bias um, a differential input of 10 volts excitation. And um, with the forces, it outputs um, a differential output as well. And the output is giving out 10 millivolts at a 10 volt excitation, which equates to 10 grams. So that translates to giving one microvolt for a milligram load. And this is a drawing of the load cell mechanism. So as you can see, if there's a force applied, there can be a stretch and a corresponding compression. And that will give um, the resulting output in different polarities. So to take our analog signal and um, convert it to a dig digital signal for our programmable system on chip, or PSOC, we use the analog to digital converter, ADC. And we're using a 32-bit Delta Sigma ADC. And it has an excitation of a differential 5-volt uh, input. And um, we're using external amplification for our input so we can um, try to um, go as close as we can to the reference of the ADC so we can technically fill the throw and uh, reach the dynamic range as optimal as possible. Um, we also have uh, internal amplifiers which are useful inside the ADC just in case we need to compensate so we can um, go closer to that range and um, we also have uh, uh, filters as well. Okay, for this <coughs> For the system overview, the differential output of the load cell is amplified and then fed into our ADC. Our ADC output is fed into our PSOC 5 and it's written to our SD card to archive the data. Meanwhile, we have a timer that's set to 10 seconds and on 10 seconds we have a auto recalibration if there is no weights on the load cell. For communications, we are uh, only using SPI. For power, we are taking uh, 5 volts from the wall and using it to charge a 3.7 volt 2500 milliamp hour battery that is boosted to 5 volts to power our PSOC 5 and used to, and inverted to negative 5 volts. This allows us to give our load cell a bipolar 10 volts excitation voltage. We also divide this bipolar 10 volt excitation to 2.5 volts to allow us to power our ADC. <coughs> For our states, we have a standby phase where we recalibrate our system and we also have a measurement state which retrieves data from the ADC and records it to the SD card. Just a quick display of our financial estimate. As you can see, load cell takes up the majority of the cost at roughly $400, where the ADC takes up roughly 20, passes about 15, the PSOC 8, power supply 631. Here's a video for you.
The final load cell. The final who helped us in designing the B-Scale. And we'd like to give a quick thank you to Texas Instruments and Cypress Semiconductors for providing the devices and um, equipment that we use, and also the lovely Professor Knosin and the UC Davis Department of Engineering as well. All right. Questions. Okay, so convince me that you can measure one milligram. With the demo? With the demo, or...? Yeah, so that was the key well, that was the key thing. Were you were you able to reliably measure one microvolt with your system? No, not one okay, microvolt. Tell, tell, tell us where, where were you able to get to it? Uh, we have ten uh, milligrams for a test load and we can read that. Uh, but the I think temperature dripped in the room, we can see that. Uh, so you can see the fluctuations in our output yeah. over time, and it's kind of overpowering. Yeah, yeah. It, it overpowers. You could go to 10 milligrams. Yeah, we could go to 10, yes. That's great. We were testing okay. it. Is that what they said? There's something like 6 milligrams out of 35? Yeah, for the pollen. Okay, so, uh, right. so, um, so what test did you actually do with these? So we did a live test in the field. Uh, it was on Monday. Yeah. Uh, the bees, we could actually see them uh, from the SD card data. We couldn't get live data work that day. But from the SD card data, we could see uh, the bee pass through for, for, uh, for a moment and then leave. And then if there was uh, a bee stayed in there for a second, we could see it stay in there and hold for a minute. So that tell us whether the bee is there or not. What about its weight difference when it leaves and coming back? Well, uh, it was just a short, it was, a, thing, right? it was, yeah, and they had just set up the hive that we went to test off of, so they didn't have any pollen collected or anything. So. It was essentially like looking to see how our B scale fit with the live um, field data. Yeah, yeah. And see if we could see the bees. Yeah. Very good work, but I would make a strong recommendation that you guys get a better PR person to present your <laughs> contributions. <laughs> because you did a, a, a fantastic job. And I really had to pull out the information uh, what you've been doing. Any questions? <laughs> okay, so, so you guys had to, this is the one group that had to interact with mechanical engineers, and that, that's an experience in itself. Mm -hmm. So, and also with the bee people, right? So tell us how that worked. How did you do that interaction? So initially, uh, we thought we were on our own, so we kind of developed an entire system. I gave ideas for the actual tubing and how the scale will be set up and everything. And the small department loved it. Uh, they kind of, they, they ran with the idea actually. The, the whole design is, is moving forward with uh, some of the concepts that I had initially. Um, but yeah, working with them was interesting because they have no mechanical background. They, they need lots of input from the engineering side. Uh, but they have their own ideas. 
And then working with the mechanical team was interesting <laughs> in that they had never actually worked with CAD before, <laughs> which was, I was amazed. And so uh, we had to work with them a little bit on setting up the CAD and coming up with proper structuring for uh, how the device was going to actually be laid out yeah. so that it would make sense. Uh, there was a couple revisions on the on the load cell, how it's going to be mounted and whatnot. So, that okay, so, so but happening is that 136 starts in the fall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The mechanical engineering team start, their team start in the winter, right? So there's this interesting relay race that's going on. Pass it off with them, yeah. And so uh, this, that in itself is it's interesting. It's a well challenge, yeah. And, yeah. and typically mechanical engineers think they can do electronics and electronic engineers think they can do mechanics. And somewhere in there, there may be a truth. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> Most of the time, my opinion is, is that we know more. Can we just keep quiet? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, excellent.